So today we're going to be talking about orbital varics and how that could come to neuro-ophthalmology. Normally this is an orbit case, but sometimes it ends up with neuro-ophthalmology because they have very strange symptoms, but also because the neuroimaging is normally normal. And the reason the MRI of the head is normal is because you didn't image the orbit. So if someone has orbital symptoms, we really need to have orbital imaging. And for MR, that means an MR of the orbit, and we have to have the gadolinium contrast as well as fat suppression sequences so that we can see the enhancement in the orbit. Otherwise, the orbital fat will block the contrast enhancement. For CT, again, the, with contrast and without contrast, the advantage of CT in patients with orbital varics is we can do a lot of maneuvers like the head down position or the Valsalva during the CAT scan, which is gonna be very difficult to do during the MRI scan. So the head down position and during the Valsalva will increase the venous component of the orbital varics and make the lesion more apparent. And if those are either not available or not helpful, we can do orbital ultrasound. And orbital ultrasound also is advantageous. This is our, it's a dynamic study, which we can do in the head down position as well as with the Valsalva. And so ultrasound sometimes is better for occult uh, orbital lesions. And so the, the orbital varix typically has a very stereotype presentation. It's an increase in proptosis, a bulging of the eye, a sensation of pressure behind the eye. And that's because there's increase in the, the venous side of the equation in an orbital varix. A varix is uh, thought to be a hematomatous lesion. It's often congenital and it's a dilated vein basically. And so it's a post-capillary venous malformation that affects the low pressure side, the vein side. And so anything that increases the venous pressure is going to make the thing bigger. And that's why cough or the valsalva or sneezing or just straining will cause the subjective complaint of increased bulging of the eye. Sometimes they might have transient diplopia or transient vision loss created by increased venous return, cough, valsalva straining. So when you hear that symptom, we really want to be imaging the orbit. And the differentiating and distinctive finding is the vein's going to be dilated. I mean, as you know, the predominant vein of the orbit is the superior ophthalmic vein. And so if we have dilation of the veins in the orbit, but to particularly the superior ophthalmic vein, we need to make sure it's not an orbital varics. If you do have the dilation of the SOV, you can watch the other video for the thing we're worried about, which is carotid cavernous fistula. And that means we might still need a catheter angiogram with direct contrast injection to exclude carotid cavernous fistula or superior ophthalmic vein thrombosis before making the diagnosis of orbital varics. So orbital varics, a distinctive symptom, visual symptoms, vision loss, double vision, proptosis, pressure sensation created by increased venous return driven by cough, valsalva, or strain. We're going to be looking for dilation of the vein on the imaging study, orbit of the MRI, CT, or ultrasound. You need to rule out carotid cavernous fistula. And if it does turn out to be a varics, normally that's benign. We don't treat it. Just don't do whatever is causing it. However, if it's symptomatic or it ruptures or it's got an arterial component, endovascular treatment and other therapies could be given.